found a machine that, well, I found a machine that I'm pretty much buying no matter what. There seems to be some kind of a gremlin or some kind of a bug in it. Is that? <laughs> Why does it look so rough? It lived down by bus stop. Oh, dude, I just realized it's got Empire Ghouls. Yeah. Dude, we got we got to sing up. No. Dude. What? No, 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 what? no. What? No, no, no. Just look at this one. Okay, yeah, you have one on that no, no, side. No, no, no. But... Don't look at that. Look over here. <laughs> right there. Yeah, I see you got brakes over there. <laughs> where, where is this one at? Why does it say? This is a 2019, right? Yeah. Yeah. Why does it say? 321 for the build date on the engine. Wait, does this have brakes to get off the trailer with? Maybe. This is going fine. This is going fine. <laughs> wow, what happened here? Winched in a little too far. I bought the worst Renegade on Marketplace. Does it, wait, hang on. What? Does, does it actually run? Yes. It doesn't run very good. I didn't say it ran good. You said, did it run? Or will it start? Does it start? <laughs> did it? And yes, it did. You could give us a little you know ins... What? Here, go ahead. Let it idle for a minute. It, it idles good. Does it? Yeah. You had to give it throttle to keep it running. We're gonna, we're gonna take you guys on a voyage. We're, we're more Outlander guys. We can fix those, you know. Obviously, oh, motor's okay. motor. It's all the same. Taking them apart, slightly different, but we're gonna bring you guys through this Renegade, and we're gonna bring you through the whole, the whole build if we choose to keep. Well, if I choose to keep it or part it out, if it seems to be like it's gonna cost way too much money to fix. But we're gonna bring you along for the ride. So, you know what? You guys are going to learn all about Renegades. <laughs> Five minutes later. The main reason the guy's selling it, and well, it's, was selling it, and the reason Seth got such a good deal. Main reason was he doesn't have time to run. Number two, okay, it's so, got mechanical issues. It's got mechanical issues. So, um, big issue being when this thing, well, supposedly when it seemed to get hot, um, it doesn't want to start anymore, but we're experiencing that right now. It's cold. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to diagnose and see why it's doing it. Um, to me, it almost sounds like to me, something with the starter or the solenoid. Um, so first thing I wanna do, I actually wanna pop the plug off the side of the engine and try to crank it by hand. Um, make which, sure it's not Make sure it's not hydro locking because that's almost what it sounds like when you hit the button, it's like Zuh, Zuh. Like it's, does, it's like it's struggling. So I wanna make sure it's not hydro locked first. Then, uh, what do you call it? We'll jump into seeing if it's possibly a starter. I do have a starter off of my 650. Um, it should be the same everything. It shouldn't really matter. Uh, so we'll throw that in just to try it. And I think we're going to go from there and see if we can actually make this thing make some noise. And prolonged noise. Because from what Seth made it sound like is... You see, he, the guys seemed to think it was a hot issue. Like any time it got hot. Yeah. Um, but I do see just some evidence looking down over by the starter right now. It's an aftermarket starter in there. So I'm wondering if... It's a cheapy Amazon starter. It's an Amazon starter and the thing can't handle the power of the 1,000 here. So let's dig in. So I think what Seth's gonna do real quick, let's pop the clutches off. Um, Cause unfortunately that's the only way to change the starter. And while he's doing that, uh, cause we gotta, I wanna see what's in there. Because I, I, I I'm wanna, scared. Uh, yeah, I'm I wanna, scared. Um, see how bad the inner box is. Gonna go over that and then we're gonna pop up, um, like I said, I'm gonna test it by hand and see how she turns over and then we'll go from there what would you get us into dude <laughs> it's all the same size stuff as the yeah no it's all you kidding me they ain't using freaking i think it's almost essentially the same quad underneath it's just different body panel different mounting locations yeah, pretty much stuff like that it all looks the same it looks like the, the winch mount's different yeah the winch mount is the frame definitely underneath different. oh you got a sway bar now look at you oh yeah so special front sway bar so this is a 2019, which is the first year of the um, electronic throttle. So Seth's going to explore that. And one thing we're actually going to explore that people have been asking us a thousand times on the channel. Can you install the Goldfinger on the electronic throttle? Yes, you can. 
Well, we're gonna try. <laughs> we're gonna do it. We're not gonna try it. We're yeah, Seth, Seth it. needs that. That's like part of our. That's part of our mojo now. Absolutely. So. If you look here, I actually already brought up one, two starter for my 650. So Jesus. this is a BRP starter. So if we're fortunate enough that this engine is is okay, um, obviously the previous owner had to go. Th he went through this thing a lot. It sounds like so. Uh, the list of stuff um, basically sounds like he went through talking to Seth. Fuel pump, injectors, multiple plugs for some reason, um, coil like ignition stuff. So he kind of was going over all the. He went over a lot, so um, we're gonna have to basically rip all the plastics off this machine and just nut and bolt the whole thing. Um, go over all the hoses, make sure everything's tight, make sure all the vent lines are in place, make sure um, everything there is looking good. Um, looks like he had some air box issues, obviously, so air box gotta come off, we gotta clean so that he, thing. He said that it wasn't leaking, but it looked like it was separating, so he siliconed it. It looks like it got a shit ton of mud in it, bud. <laughs> cool, yeah. But that looks like it came through the filter itself. So this is different. So this is the newer style stud and stuff. Like that. <coughs> I haven't seen this yet, actually. What, the primary? So yeah, it's held on by our key, but then also the secondary has the stud. So we had to figure all that out. Okay, well, no big deal. Um, that looks great. Oh, why don't you give What'd you say over? you wanted to... Yeah, crank over my hand. We'll just rotate the engine forward. In the forward direction. Well, that rotates easy, doesn't it? It bound up there a little bit. But oh, yeah, it's yeah, no. compression. No, that... Feels fine? Yeah. It's not hydro-locking or vapor-locking, then. No. Nope. All right, so right now we're going to get these clutches <coughs> off. we got all the clutch pullers and everything. And get the back plate off. And see what we're working with. All right, so clutches are off. Um, Let's take a look at these bad boys. They have 100% been underwater. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they do suck in some dust, but this is pretty bad. Um, yeah, so didn't notice that it's missing the one-way pawls for the uh, one-way bearing, but that's no big deal. We have some of those laying around. We actually have test 850 clutch over here. So we do have that going for us. I also do have my STM. Alright, give her a rip off there. It's like a band aid. Oh, there's some busco in there. Oh, yeah. Busco. Oh, there's much busco. There's some busco rocks. Oh, there's our starter. Okay. Alright. Yeah. So, okay. Maybe we'll find some busco gold in here. here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's your O ring for the belt box, by the way. Oh, it's stuck to the end. Looks like he's siliconed that, I'm guessing. That's why it's piled up on there. Okay. So let's get that starter out. Let's get the new one in. Um, let's just disconnect the battery. battery and the charger real quick. Just this way we don't accidentally... Push it up? Yeah, not that it would be... It would do anything, but... And just as I figured, it looks like they studded this, dude. What's that? I don't know what you're uh, For that bolt. Remember I said the one looks like it was a little messed up? The bolt. Over uh, here. Yeah. Yep. So he did. He did. Uh, did an oopsie on there. That's so okay. That's off. Still don't know why this thing runs like. We'll figure that out. All right. Could let's... be the flash on it. Like. Oh, it does have a flash. It does. Okay. Amazon. Crap. BRP. I think we're gonna be in luck. I think there's nothing wrong with this engine. <laughs> I'm saying these words and hoping yeah, they're true. Let's get, let's get through that. And uh, we just need a little bit of oil. Actually, if you want to take some off the dipstick and just lubricate this to put this in. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then we're going to try to fire it up. Obviously, we got to put the, um, what do you call it? It's at least the primary clutch back on temporarily just to act as a counterweight. The gearing stuff looks good in there. I don't see any abnormal wear. So it's got to get a little bit of oil on our O rings. This way it slides in nice and easy. Get this thing, get it wired in, and then. She makes some noise now. Actual noise. And repeatable noise. That's, that's, that's the goal we're going for. So let's go ahead, get her in there. I'm going to laugh and be happy for you if that's all that's all of it. That'd be good. So let's go ahead and get this done. All right. All right, guys. So we just replaced the starter, the Den C, well, I don't know, whatever it was. The <laughs> Japanese crap. The Chinese crap. Chinese crap. Um, Japanese, sorry. Japanese. Yes. Uh, with the BRP. Um, we put the clutches back on the stock secondaries having some issues. We don't know why it's not... It's not spreading. 
It's not spreading, but the Helix was lined up, so we don't know what the heck's going on with it. So it's sitting over there. We put the STM actually on right now, so this is not what you would normally have. The one-way bearing is not doing anything right now in the stock primary, so she's a little out of sorts. But let's see if she fires up like a normal quad here. All right, here we go. So I didn't even get to, damn, that thing's loud. I didn't even get to ride this thing yet. Marshall gets first ride, so I guess that's what we uh, we give our friends who uh, have the starters laying around to fix said bike. So we're gonna let it warm up because apparently what the problem it was, was once it got warm, it didn't want to start back up again. So we're gonna, we're gonna run it around a little bit, get it warm. And then uh, get it warm and then shut it off, make sure it starts. So I was just telling them the issue, one of the, the main issue that he had with it is once the bike itself warms up. Oh, it's warm. I feel it. Um, It doesn't want to start again. <laughs> and like that? Like it did it right there. Well, battery could be dead. I wonder if it's charging. I don't know. So first noticeable thing, well, this setup with the clutching, not good. It's got no power. <laughs> um, doesn't stop at all. You're better off using your feet. And then now we got that issue where it's still not restarting. Let's check battery voltage right now. Okay. Um, let me get a quad out to get up there again. Did I really got to tell you already, dude? Technically, you're telling yourself because you shut it off. Well, I was testing it. All right, so sit rep. So right now, what we're doing, I just tried pulling the plugs out and putting a bore scope down inside the jug. So I just wanna see what everything's looking like inside. Problem though is my bore scope's just a little too big. It's literally the size of the, uh, the actual spark plug here. So unfortunately, it will not fit. So I can't really look inside the bore, see how she looks. So what I wanna do is see, we're trying to access the um, front spark plug right now and just get some more access to the motor. Then we're probably gonna try to put the plugs, I'm gonna pull that out of the plug just to see what that looks like. Then we're gonna probably try to fire back up, I'm thinking, and if it fires up, let it run until we can shut it down again. Then um, 
pull the plugs and see if it turns over hard because what we just did before is I tried to crank it over with just my hand using the um, on the clutch and it feels it's tight so it's acting like she's uh, basically tightening up for some reason not sure yet why my dad made a good point um, because this thing had some issues with the fuel pump and some other stuff might have some water in the gas or something so we might drain the tank and just start fresh with some gas um, he's already putting new injectors and stuff into so that should all be okay and just try to see if we can't get this thing uh, doing something. But yeah, so right now we're just gonna try to get the plugs out, rotator over, see if the engine itself feels tight, to see if it uh, feels like bearings or anything like that, uh, and then kind of take it from there. Yeah, we checked the oil, does not look milky or bad or anything like that. The oil definitely needs to be changed, but we don't, we don't want to do that just yet unless we have to pull the engine, because why waste a $50? Uh, oil change kit if we're gonna pull the engine and going through it. There's a smoke. Tiny bit. It does. Blue, <laughs> blue, blue or black? Blue. But I mean mine smokes on startup sometimes. Not smoke smokes on startup. This didn't smoke smoke either but if you rev it right off the bat there's a little bit of blue smoke. But you know what? It blew like one, it blew a blue cloud and then it wasn't just sitting there as a blue cloud. It yeah. Just smoking. That dirt flies got another project. <laughs> oh do we have a project? <laughs> yes, Alright so yeah right now we're gonna get that front plug out. We just want to check things and see how it's doing. And uh, we'll update you guys on what we uh, unearth as we dig into this thing. It's, we were hopeful with the starter, but looks like we're digging in some more. All right guys, so basically what we're finding here, this engine's gonna have to be pulled. So basically the rear cylinder right now has 150 PSI. It takes a couple rotations to get up there, but it does get up there fine. The front cylinder's got 180, which is a little bit more um, than, like, quite a bit more than the other one. They're supposed to be within, like, 10% of each other, but um, they're, it's pretty far off. So, um, I think this, based off of us finding a bunch of mud and stuff in the end, or in the air box, probably translates down into this thing was swamped, uh, unfortunately. So, I think the safest bet, being that this engine still runs, and... Everything seems okay with it for the most part. The safest thing to do is just to pull it and go through it. Because as long as it's not damaged at this point, um, it does, it's not going to cost Seth much to go through it. Um, we're just going to need a gasket kit and we'll start specking stuff out and see what's actually tightening up on this thing. Um, more or less so and then we might end up finding out the bearings or, or, or we'll find mud in the oil screen if that's the case if it was swamped we'll also um i said the bearings are shot we'll find that out and all that fun stuff so i think it's just going to be the safest thing to do i've yeah, done it before honestly i believe that you know at this point just pulling the motor putting it on a bench going through the whole thing um it's not hard to do the gasket kit i think's 150 bucks yeah you know what for the peace of mind at least to know it's worth 150 bucks. That's for damn sure. The biggest thing too that I see out of this, um, we're gonna get the nut and bolt this entire quad. So while the engine's out, we can go over all the rest of it, make sure because uh, this thing had a rough. How many miles this got on it? Just under 400. <laughs> Might have hit 400. This thing had. Right? It looks like it's been it, ridden over 2,000, 3,000 miles. Yeah. Um, so. Hard life. And it's been taken apart so many times. So I think the safest bet is just to go through the whole entire quad, top to bottom, clean everything, clean the air box out, start from scratch, just make sure everything's tight, go over every hose, the whole nine, just make sure it's good, and put this engine back together correctly, make sure it's all good, and have a good running quad. I think that's going to be the safest bet. Probably get a new tune because I still don't trust that. Yeah, I don't know about that tune or not, so... All right, guys, so that's going to actually wrap up this video because um, right now we're actually going to finish up Seth's other quad. Get that thing back together because if, if you can see in the background, it's in, a thousand, it's in a thousand pieces. So i um, going to get that thing back together if you call our last garage update video. Um, if you haven't, it's going to be right up here. But uh, it's going to wrap it up for today. What we're going to do is do some more investigating off camera and let you guys know. Uh, make sure you guys are following along because... Uh, most likely we're going to be doing engine rebuild on this so and yeah. we've done one on channel before it was a very successful video basically go i want to go over this thing top to bottom make sure it's good to go for seth because yeah uh, no absolutely that's it's, it's worth rebuilding because he's he bought this thing with possibly parting it out in mind yes. to be honest um because it's got a lot of good stuff going for it besides the running issue right now so mm -hmm. 
Make sure you guys are liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. We really appreciate your support. Seth, where can they catch us on the interwebs? You can catch us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, hit us up, shoot us a message, whatever. So with that, we'll just have to catch you guys next time on Let Dirt Fly. Have you forgotten where you were?